video. Today we're going to be talking to Dr. Kathleen Lane. I've been going to Dr. Lane for about five years for my Botox and fillers and today we're going to talk about Botox specifically and give you all the ins and outs and all the questions that you want to know the answers to and uh, it should be pretty fun. At the end of this we're going to go in and we're actually going to get injections. You'll see that live on camera and Mr. Stafford will be in there getting injections too for his Botox. So that should be a lot of fun. So, Kate, tell us about yourself and your background and your history and what you actually do. Because she doesn't just do Botox, okay? She's like the real deal. My name is Kate Lane and I'm an oculofacial plastic surgeon. Um, I did my residency in ophthalmology and I, then I did a two year fellowship in oculofacial plastic surgery certified by the American Society of Oculofacial Plastic Surgery. What else do I do besides Botox and fillers? Yeah, you do. I, I do. Mean, she's an amazing surgeon <laughs> to begin with. I do a lot of eyelid surgery, um, aging changes after trauma. I get to um, work with a lot of kids with congenital um, ptosis or tear duct obstructions, as well as um, a more serious branch of my practice where I deal with um, ocular and orbital trauma and orbital tumors. Um, as well as a fun cosmetic portion um, where I get to do eyelid lifts and uh, blood plasties as well as Botox and fillers. So how long have you been doing this work, the actual fillers and the Botox and stuff? So I learned a fellowship 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. The aesthetic market has really grown um, and developed along with my training post-residency um, and fellowship. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do a lot of continuing medical education where I go um, to various meetings and meet with um, experts in aesthetics. All right, so let's get into Botox and what is Botox specifically? So Botox is botulinum toxin, a thing we commonly know that grows uh, in honey, and that's why you don't give honey to children. Um, Botox use actually started in ophthalmology um, for uh, treatment of functional spasms around the eyes. Uh, people have had, um, something called blepharospasm when their eyes squeeze closed mm -hmm. or hemifacial spasm. Um, and we started noticing that treated patients had fewer wrinkles. So it became, it, the aesthetic market grew out of uh, that functional use. Um, and so now we use uh, botulinum toxin to treat muscle overaction as well as a preventative use in aesthetics to prevent you from making lines that can make wrinkles, mm -hmm. and also to just give people a more relaxed and um, open appearance. Um, okay, so that's a really good point. Um, what's the cost? So cost, I think, is really location dependent. Mm -hmm. I will tell you. I agree with that. I'm quite sure, sure on the coasts in New York um, and LA, I think it's probably much more expensive than in our green little state. Yeah. Um, in Vermont, the cost of Botox is probably somewhere between 12 and $14 a unit. Um, now some people will treat, will, will price by area treated, and some people will price by unit. Um, I do the latter um, only because I think it's sort of more equitable. Some people have big, strong muscles that mm -hmm. take more toxin to relax them. Some people have quite petite little muscles. So you know, it, as a whole, I mean, it, it's not you know, it's not fourteen dollars. A, a unit is goes into a little compression, like that. Um, much. So. Each little injection, for me, the way I do it for Botox, is 2.5 units per injection. Okay. Um, now some people will change that, it really depends on your style and what you're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. And you can use more concentrated units or more diffuse units to achieve different effects. Okay. okay. And then where do you actually insert the Botox? Where does it go in the face? So that's part of the artistry of the mm -hmm. whole thing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, let's make a point of that, okay? Because it is really artistry, and you need to find somebody who knows how to do injectables, right? Because you can bruise. I have never had a bruise with Dr. Kate here, ever. Um, but some people just don't know where to place the product. Yeah, I mean, I did a two-year fellowship in just the muscles and the bones and the soft tissue around the face. Um, really have to know your injector and know their skill set and their training um, because if it's put in the wrong place you are 
having a problem for three months. Yeah, at least. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely having a problem for three months. So you really yeah. want to know somebody who knows exactly where they're injecting. Yeah, and how do you find that? I believe in word of mouth recommendations. Happy patients send me more patients. Um, so I really believe um, in that. And I also believe in the relationship. You know, people who shop around for the best deal one time or another, they're never going to have any consistency in mm -hmm. their injections. They're never going to get to know what you like yep. or what worked last time or what exactly. didn't work last time. That's a big thing yeah. because, like I said, I've been coming here for five years. You know exactly where to place. Right. We have a recipe that works for you. It does. And it's, it's really consistent. Mm. Always consistent. Right. That's why I never have an issue. Right. So. So you can use Botox almost anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, we used to think of Botox as only around the eyes, and we used to think of it as only, a, um, and some people might still, as really paralyzing muscles. But higher aesthetics at this point, we're using Botox to change the face, to change the expression to relax, to lift the brows, um, to relax the depressors of the angle of the mouth, to turn up the corner of the lip. You can really use Botox almost anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing that's verboten. Although a lot of things are off-label. Right. Um, and that's an FDA indication. So how long until you actually start seeing results? That was a big question that everyone seemed to have. I think the general answer is anywhere from three to ten days. Everybody's a little bit different. I it's, know that. <laughs> it's a toxin, and it's really how your body interacts with the toxin. When should you start getting Botox? Uh, is it ever too early or ever too late? I believe this Botox. I believe that Botox is preventative. Um, I always say to patients, if you can't make the line, you can't make the wrinkle. Um, I started doing Botox when I was in my probably mid to late 20s mm -hmm. uh, because I noticed I was pulling my eyebrows down um, really? and I see my mother and my mother's got really low eyebrows and I said well I'm going to prevent that by if you can't pull them down they're not going to come down. Right, right. Um, so I give myself, I, st I started by giving myself the Botox brow lift. I love that one. It's the brow good. lift is it's it's good amazing. on the same Yeah, it's really good. Um, so, so I don't think there's a, a too early. Okay. Um, I probably, probably 15 is too early. Yeah, yeah. I, I right. think that most, we don't want to go Kardashian early. We want to go like <laughs> normal American right. early. And I think it's sort of um, mid to late 20s is, it's pretty reasonable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you, when you start to see changes. Right. Exactly. And how about too late? Is it ever too late for Botox? I don't think it's ever too late. It's ever too late for anything. I think my oldest patient that I do Botox on is probably 85. Wow, and really? she's spicy and fabulous, and she doesn't want to have wrinkles. I love that. I mean, that's <laughs> the best story I've ever heard, because believe me, you know that's going to be me. <laughs> OK, what are some of the side effects, common side effects of Botox? Anything? So it should be pretty low impact. Um, oftentimes, you'll have a little um, sort of bee sting looking thing for about 10 minutes. That's the yeah. product. And that usually gets absorbed pretty quickly. Um, I always tell patients, anytime I come near you with a needle, I can give you a bruise. Uh -huh. But it's really rare because yeah. the needles are teeny tiny. Teeny tiny. Um, and you'll see later that we use a bright light so we can see any blood vessels under the skin. But that's, that's a risk. Um, if you put too much in a place, um, or if you put it in a place where you really don't need it, it can cause problems. Um, you know, it, it, on my consent, it says it can cause facial weakness, right? I mean, that's yeah. the point. But it can cause facial weakness in places you don't want it. Right. So if you chase um, crow's feet, you know, sometimes they come down the cheek. But you have to know your anatomy because right underneath the crow's feet, right underneath the abicularis muscle that makes the crow's feet is also the muscle that pulls the corner of your mouth up. And if it diffuses in there, then you can't smile. And you look pretty smile. sad for at least three months. Right. That's for sure, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. The good news is, oftentimes the untoward side effects of Botox treatment wear off a lot quicker than the ones that we're actually trying to get. Oh, do. really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Good to know. All right. Um, how long is the downtime? Is there downtime? Recover time. Ten minutes. I know.
It really is 10 minutes. It's 10 minutes now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to be bruised and you're not going to have to cover things up. You're not going to have to stay away from going outside. Right. Or... You could go right out to dinner with your girlfriends and I would never know. Mm -hmm. And you'll see too when we do the filming, the actual injections, you'll see that little bee sting. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how quickly it goes, it goes away. Quick. Just like that. Okay, here's the big one. Okay. Does it hurt? <laughs> So generally we use a teeny, teeny, teeny needle, a 33 gauge needle for injections. Um, I will say I change the needle often because just going through the skin can blunt the tip of the needle and it can start to hurt. But there are things we can do to make it easier. Some topical numbing cream um, will make the whole experience a little bit more comfortable. Um, and some people want to do that all the time and some people say it doesn't really hurt at all with that teeny needle. Um, so I would say most of the time it doesn't hurt. What's the difference between Botox and fillers? I, I get that question all, all the time. Um, mm -hmm. um, fillers improve contours, Botox improves movement. Is it possible to achieve a natural look with Botox injections? That's what I think my specialty is. I feel like that's why a lot of people come to me. Yeah. Not many of my patients want to look totally expressionless. Um, I feel that expression, the ability to interact and to talk and to be empathetic mm -hmm. um, is part of, it's a, it's a non-verbal expression. Right. And you don't want to completely wipe that out. So I always say to pa patients, like, I still want to look angry at my children. I want them to know that I'm angry. <laughs> but I don't want to make a wrinkle. Yeah, right? yeah, so got it. I like to find that balance between being able to show expression. Mm -hmm. but but not creating wrinkles. Yeah. And I like to achieve that for my patients. So I often will start with a low dose and work up, and that's part of the relationship that I was right. talking about. Right, exactly. How long does Botox last for? Again, a little individual dependent. I would say anywhere from three to four months is reasonable to expect. Mm -hmm. There is a dose dependence, so the more you put in, the longer it lasts, but you definitely have a risk of having no expression at the very beginning right. and then it starts to wash out. So we try and find a balance that's a little bit different for each patient. That was another question that people were wondering about. Was it possible to get too much? But, you know. Yeah, too much usually causes side effects. Yeah. Like a droopy brow or a Spock look or something like that. Oh, that's a good one. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then here's the big one because Mr. Staff is going to be getting Botox today. He's one of our favorite patients. Everybody loves him. Uh, so, what about men and women? What's the what have you seen since you started doing this, right? What's the average today of men getting it compared to when you first began? Definitely more men now. Yeah. Definitely more accept, accepted now. Um, they call it bro talks. Do you know what it is? <laughs> um, they gotta take over everything. <laughs> But definitely more, and for the same reasons. Mm -hmm. um, although they usually couch it in, you know, I have to look younger because I have to compete with the younger men at work. Okay. Um, but it makes them feel good about themselves exactly. too. Exactly. And that's what this whole thing is about. Absolutely. And don't you want your your guy to be like, yeah, I want to look good too. I mean, you're out there doing all this stuff, right? Yeah. So it's great that guys are into it now. Totally. All right. So okay, Botox aftercare. A little ice. Um, you know, some people have all these rules like don't exercise, don't swim, don't stand on your head, move your face, don't move your face. I don't know that it makes any difference. I, yeah, I just go home and live my life. Yeah. This is one thing, um, because I used to do this. The things you should do before Botox, like take what kind of medication? Again, there's a wide range of patients that I do this mm -hmm. on and a wide range of health problems that these patients have and they all right. want the same thing. I would never stop an aspirin or Coumadin or any blood thinner for it. But I would always tell patients, there's a chance you might bruise. Mm -hmm. You probably have a big, bigger chance of bruising than if you weren't taking it. All right, I think that's all of our questions, right? I think we're good. We're gonna go in, we're gonna get our injections now. I can't wait, because <laughs> I'm getting a little liney around here. We've been waiting a little too long, so. We'll fix it. All right, we're gonna fix it now. So we'll see you in a few minutes. Hope you like this. Check us out, keep watching. So we're gonna start by mixing up our Botox. Fresh bottle, always use sterile technique. And we're mixing it up with bacteriostatic saline, which actually helps, bacteriostatic saline has a little bit of a numbing agent in it. Um, so it actually helps with the comfort of the injections. And 
you always want to be really careful and gentle with your product because um, it's powdered gold. So mix it up and then we agitate it a little bit and then we're ready to draw it up into our syringes. Okay, so here we are sitting in the chair ready to get my injections. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention when we were talking before, when you do come in for your Botox, um, no makeup on your face, okay? That's really important. So just come in with clear face, no makeup, okay? All right, we're gonna start it. Here we go, kids. So we're ready to get started. She has these squeezy balls in lieu of a little topical numbing medication. I like to squeezy the balls. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna... Get you cleaned up. So our plan, and this is something we've developed over the last five, five years, years. Uh, is we're gonna treat the glabellar com complex and give her a little bit of a Botox brow lift, as well as treat the crow's feet, um, and which look like this. And then <laughs> when she does that, she also activates the nasalis muscle. Go ahead and squeeze up your nose, which gives us what they call bunny lines. So we treat those to relax that. You know how the cute they are on a bunny? Not so cute on a girl. All right. <laughs> and then we're also going to tri um, treat the depressor anguli oris, which is a muscle that pulls the corner of the mouth down, as well as the mentalis, which give you that sort of orange skin appearance of the, of the chin. So I always ask patients, to animate so I can see exactly where I'm treating. Uh, and that's how you know that you're gonna put the toxin in the right place. Again, this is a 33 gauge needle, so super tiny. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, rest your head back. So make an angry face. Good, relax. So I like to treat right down on the glabella. And then a little bit higher. Now make an angry face. Good, relax. And then this is the root of the corrugator muscle. And this little pinch of blood is not is all normal. She's not gonna have a bruise there. And the corrugator has a head, and now make an angry face and a tail. It's what pulls the brow in and down. And we'll treat all of those. And now one more time, make an angry face. Good, relax. And I also treat the lateral brow depressor. This is what gives a little bit of a relaxed up brow lift. That is so good, that brow lift. Make an angry face for me. Good, relax. Somebody has sensitive skin. I always give her little dots, but never a little bruise. Never. One more angry face. Good, relax. This is the one I think always hurts the most when I do it to myself because there's a nerve that comes out right here that gives sensation to the forehead. One more angry face, good, relax. You see that dip right here and we'll just treat that so she can't pull her brows down and in. Now we're gonna treat the crow's feet. Go ahead, smile for me. And we look for the, where, where the muscle is where, moves. This is where I ask, always ask for more. Can I have more? Just mm -hmm. like now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's always some big blood vessels in here so we always, Good lighting helps to avoid those. And these are these little bee stings that settle down. And this does not hurt at all. You are particularly tough. Yeah, I am. I'm a bleeder. <laughs> and again, I'm gonna try to avoid these blood vessels here so you don't do a bruise. Doing good. I'll see. 
it makes your eyes water a little bit, but there's really no pain. I mean, it's not painful at all. Sometimes it makes people sneeze. Well, that's true too. I, you know, you know what's the weird one is the one in here, yeah. right? The bunny yeah. thing. That's the weird one. Yeah. But there's a, a good one. there's a nerve that gives sensation to the eyelids that has a little recurrent branch that goes down the tip of the nose, which is why people sneeze. Oh yeah. Injections around the eyes. Okay, which one we're doing? That was a fun fact. We're gonna do the nasal elevator. All right. This is this is the weird one. This okay. is the one that makes you tear up a little bit. A little bit. All right. I'm down. I'm squeezing my balls. All right. So again, I'm gonna <laughs> ask you to make a squeeze up your nose. We type, try and feel where the muscle is. One more time. Squeeze. Good. Relax. Ready. Ready. Okay, so make a pouty face. Roll out your lower lip. So this is the muscle, go ahead and do it one more time, that makes the marionette line. And it's the muscle that pulls down the corner of the mouth. And if we relax it just a little bit, we have less of a downturn and it gives the muscles that pull the corner of the mouth up more relative power um, to, to elevate the corner of the mouth. So you get a sort of more happy, sort of Mona Lisa smile type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're gonna treat the mentality. And I will say these injections don't change the way you smile. And one more time, uh, roll out your lips. There we go. They don't change the way you can drink out of a straw. Oh my god. You are done. Would you like some ice? Ta-da! For sure. So some ice for you. Thank you. Okay, and next up. Next up is Mr. Stafford. Mr. Stafford! <laughs> Calling Mr. Stafford. Your time. Your time. Your time in the spotlight, dude. Let's go. <laughs> no, just walk behind me. <laughs> Here he is, first time on camera. This is the man who makes it all happen. <laughs> Here's my husband, Vince Stafford, and he is gonna get areas. <laughs> Being as natural as can be. Um, here he is, and he's gonna sit in the chair now. He's gonna get his Botox and um, let the fun begin, okay? All right, Don, I'm gonna switch seats with you. All right, give me the... Uh... Give you the balls, sit. Okay, right. here we go. So again, we're gonna get you cleaned up. Okay. And we have a little bit of a different pattern for Vince. We're gonna do his glabella and his crow's feet, but we're also gonna do his forehead. And the most important thing, I think, in treating men is that we don't wanna feminize you. You know, we wanna do a, a gentle lift and arch of the brow in women, but if men, that would, that, that's mm -hmm. not what, what they're looking not for. Guys want. You have your balls. Yeah. Go ahead and rest your head back. You want me to make a face? <laughs> go and rest back. Yeah, go ahead, make an angry face. Okay, relax. So. So similar, I think men usually need a little bit more toxin than women because they have bigger muscles. right into the head of that corrugator there. And a little bit more up there. Make an angry face for me. Good, relax. And the tail. You doing okay? Mm -hmm. Dulling a little bit, so I'm gonna switch it out. Okay. That was easy. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna do the crows. Smile for me. Good, relax. Again, we try to avoid any blood vessels. You know, I didn't feel that at all. It's crazy. 
I will say one of the risks of treating in this area is that people who have dry eye, sometimes it can make the dry eye a little worse, but I think that's very rare, but just something that people should hear about. And one of the other things I always say about Botox is one of the good things and the bad things about it is that it doesn't last forever. All right, so now we're gonna do the frontalis, which gives the horizontal lines on the forehead. Go ahead and lift up your forehead. Good, relax. And Botox, brand name Botox, which is what we're using, actually just came out with a FDA approved pattern for treating the frontalis. Now, as a general rule, I hate patterns because I think patterns are made for the FDA process and not for the patient. Lift up your forehead for me. Well, you're done. That was easy. Good. Wow. And Mrs. Stafford watched the whole process. It takes him less time because he's more beautiful than I am. But we ain't chit chat less too. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, it has been about five minutes since I had my injections. Uh, this is my face. I mean, you can't tell that I had anything done, can you? Back to normal. There we go. Ready Back to, to go. Back to normal, but better than ever. So <laughs> I want to thank everyone for stopping by, watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope it answered any of your questions you had, um, any of the problems you might have had previously. That's what we're here to do. I want to thank Dr. Kate for doing this with us and opening up the office on Saturday and being so sweet. She's amazing. All right, so you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and subscribe to our blog. Um, I hope you like this again, and just want to say thanks for stopping by. Thanks, Kate. Thanks. Bye. Bye.